probably about a week ago, I beat Elden Ring, and it led me to think about life and death, and I, I think that's pretty funny because there's a lot of death in that game. There's a lot of death in every From Software game, and I don't really know how to segue into what I'm trying to say, but uh, it doesn't really have to do with the game itself, but... I wanted to talk about the cycle of life and death. And for most of you, you probably read the title and you're like, Cujo, what the fuck is a samsara? What boss is that and how do I fight him? So I hate to break it to you, but samsara is not a boss in Elden Ring. I'm sorry. Uh, samsara is actually an Eastern philosophy concept from Buddhism that I first learned about through a book called Siddhartha. And if you want to know more about Siddhartha, you have your good friend Google, but I'll give you kind of a basic overview of what Siddhartha is. Siddhartha is a book about a monk who basically grows up the entirety of his life being a monk. And then goes off on his own to kind of find the meaning to life in his own way. He becomes a rich person in a town, basically climbs to the top of the social ladder, decides that he's unsatisfied, and then goes back to a monk slash beggar type, but then he starts, oh, what are they called? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, he becomes a fairy. That's what he becomes. But uh, to kind of sum up what he figures out is he finds out about samsara, which samsara is the cycle of life and death. There's a moment in the book where he realizes that he's tired of everything that he's surrounded himself with and then goes to the woods and then falls asleep and basically grieves the entire time. But then once he grieves, he wakes up again and that's when he becomes the ferryman. And he completely flips his life around from being this rich merchant in a town to just kind of being a guy with no possessions who ferries people across the river. And then he acknowledges that he's going to get tired of that too. And he's going to move on to something else. And eventually he's going to die. Someone's going to be born in his wake. And it's going to be never ending. It's kind of weird to talk about this, especially when I'm talking about Elden Ring. But I feel like I kind of had the same experience with Elden Ring. If you knew me personally, or if you do know me personally, I've played almost every From Software game from Dark Souls onward, and each game that came out I got increasingly more and more invested in From Software games, and was super stoked for them. And I remember when Elden Ring got announced, uh, everyone was like super excited for this game. I was pretty excited, but not as excited as I was for Bloodborne, and not as excited as I was for Dark Souls. And even saying that when I played through both those games, I actually got really teary-eyed at the end because the, the game actually ended. Like, there was no more content other than just replaying the game. Unless you count the DLCs, then I went back and I played through the DLCs. But Elden Ring came out, and that's probably their biggest project in terms of game. There's so much to play through. There's so many bosses, so many areas. So much exploration. It's kind of like an accumulation of all the th stuff that they've implemented through their games throughout the years. And after completing it, I didn't really feel anything. Which is strange because normally playing through a From Software game, I don't know if people can relate to this, but like I would get super stoked just increasingly playing through the game. And like I would go to work and then come home, play the game, be super stoked for it like throughout the day, but Elden Ring I kind of felt indifferent about, and I even skipped some of the bosses, which I know is kind of a sin in a in a From Software game, like, oh, how dare you skip a boss. The notable one I can think of that I skipped is Melania, and all my friends talked about how I need to fight her. She's like the life-stealing boss. You gotta try fighting her. You gotta beat her, but I just didn't feel a huge investment or interest in doing it, but I think if you were to take what I talked about with Samsara, I think naturally... I've experienced the From Software formula time and time again, and I've gotten a lot better at it. So good to the point where, like, I didn't even really struggle with Elden Ring all too much. Like, a couple bosses I got kind of stuck on, but for the most part, I played through the game completely fine. Didn't even really use summons. Used the summon here and there. I uh, used Mimic tier, but didn't summon any other players. Didn't really summon NPCs. I just used a big sword and thwacked a bunch of shit. But it's been this way with me for like a lot of series or just anything in general, even when it comes to music or movies or stuff that I like and dislike, it, it goes through its own cycle of life and death. So if I want to look at Elden Ring in this light, we can equate Elden Ring to Samsara and we can equate Samsara to life and death. Understanding from software, their games are kind of wearing down on me now. 
I'm not having as much enjoyment as I once did. I think my brain or my soul is looking for something new. And I think eventually I'll find something that really resonates, clicks with me, and I'll be engrossed in it just as much as I was with Bloodborne or Dark Souls. But you can kind of take that philosophy into like a micro level or, you know, for the entire, like a spiritual level, if you want to believe in Buddhism or, uh, anything like that if like if you believe in reincarnation like we just get to do life over and over again and new experiences every time and i don't personally believe that you carry memories of past lives into your next life but i don't know some people claim to have memories from past lives i don't have any so i mean if if that's true that's cool i don't know it it just doesn't make sense to me i don't even know why i would bring that up but my point is is that there's always going to be exciting things to look forward to crazy shit that happened in the past we might as well as enjoy things that we enjoy in the present moment it's always going to change and as long as you understand that uh you'll never get bored really or you won't put yourself through the same experiences over and over i think you'll naturally just get tired of the thing understand that your desire for it's kind of dying and you'll just move on to the next thing and that's never going to end so we just might as well as enjoy it while we just keep moving on through life if it's through Elden Ring or video games, Call of Duty. I don't know what the hell you're playing. Probably playing Elden Ring if you're watching this. Yeah, I mean, if you love Elden Ring and are like crying at the end boss, then maybe it's at that high point for you. But uh, it's just something that I noticed was just me playing through Elden Ring. I didn't feel that much for the the game, really. I just kind of played through it and was like, yep, that's from software. It's pretty cool, pretty sick. They got jumped in a kind of Dark Souls game now, so that's cool. Yeah, if you agree or disagree with me, just let me know in the comments. It's kind of an abstract concept, but I wanted to talk about it. It had been sitting on my mind over the past week after I completed Elden Ring, so just wanted to kind of throw a thought out there. But if you watched this until the end, seriously, thank you so much. Uh, You could subscribe, like, all the YouTube shit, and uh, I'll catch you guys later. So, goodbye now.